Hi, I'm Paul Milner from the charity National Numeracy and I'm going to have a number natter with Peter Cherry about dyscalculia. So Peter, when, no, how actually did you find out that you have dyscalculia? Okay, so I found out I had dyscalculia, which is pronounced to rhyme with Julia, um, when I was a child. Um, so I don't remember much about it, um, but I was always very strong at literacy um, and quite weak when it came to numeracy. Um, so I was in the top uh, set of six uh, for English, um, but then I went from the bottom to then actually going to what was then called the Special Needs Centre for maths. So that's really when I found out. And how does dyscalculia affect you in, in your daily life? Yeah, so in my daily life, and it's definitely had, I would say it's, it's having more of an impact as an adult. Um, but it affects me in daily life in the fact that budgeting particularly is a, is a struggle for me. Um, reading a speedometer, um, reading bus or train timetables, um, also judging what time to leave home. I'm a terrible kind of timekeeper, but it's challenging for me, I should say. And also forgetting numbers, misreading numbers, and forgetting times tables. I still don't know my times tables, so yeah. Right, and, and I think you just said it, it affects you more as an adult. I mean, how, how do you feel about it now compared to, to earlier in life? Yeah, so when I, I would say as a child, I never really enjoyed doing maths. I always found it quite dry um, compared to English, which I felt was all about imagination and, and, and things like that, whereas maths felt quite dry. But when I was a second, when I was at secondary school, when I was a teenager, I really became quite acutely aware then because, you know, as a teenager, you want to, you know, appear the same, you don't like differences. And for me, it was quite a struggle to be in the top set for English and then having to go to the Special Needs Centre for Maths. And I used to, you know, lie about it to friends. Um, I used to, yeah, it was, it was a really great big source of anxiety for me, um, to be honest. But as an adult, um, I found it starts to affect my job prospects, particularly. So I don't have a GCSE in Maths for example, and I tried to reset GCSE and maths, but um, I unfortunately haven't made a C, so the highest I've got is an F. Um, and I found that that's a problem for job prospects, despite the fact that, you know, I have um, actually have a PhD in literature and um, I've also taught for 12 years in um, adult education and further education. Um, but just getting on a PGCE programme is, is, is really quite difficult if you don't have a GCSE and maths. Of course, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, a national numeracy, we find that about one in every three adults uh, lacks confidence with numbers, and there's all kinds of different reasons for this. But one of the reasons is dyscalculia. Um, so what, what can somebody do who thinks that they may have dyscalculia? Well, I would say the most important thing you can do is reach out to the dyscalculia network. Um, or Dyscalculia Network, sorry, it's Julia, isn't it? Uh, Dyscalculia Network, um, which was founded by um, two maths teachers and maths learning um, uh, difficulty specialists, Kat Edel and Rob Jennings. Um, and they provide so much support, and you can see them all over social media, um, but they provide so much support for people with uh, dyscalculia, from um, setting you up with tutors who are specialised in um, in dealing with dyscalculia. My uh, maths tutor, I take maths lessons um, from um, someone called Amanda Davy, who's um, fantastic and has really kind of transformed maths from a source of anxiety for me to the point where I almost look forward to it. Um, oh, wow. And um, and also um, they're also providing different um, supports for uh, support for maths teachers as well. Um, so it's a really great source, and for adults, it's also very important. We're um, so I've actually recently joined the um, advisory board um, as the first dyscalculic person on the advisory board, and um, we're talking at the moment about developing all sorts of things that can help adults and so we've got some exciting plans um, for that as well. Great, okay, so the Dyscalculia Network. Yes. Brilliant, okay. Dyscalculia and I network. think the British Dyslexia Association also offers support, so that's the other port of call. Fantastic. And and also then, what, what can we in the UK all do to start to try and raise awareness and understanding actually around Dyscalculia? 
Well, I think, you know, we're seeing a lot about kind of the strength of dyscal- uh, dyslexia. And I think we need to start thinking about what strengths dyscalculics have. And the kind of, and I think um, a good way to do that is really to start raising awareness about dyscalculia, to start thinking about, um, yeah, the kind of skills that dyscalculics have and supporting. So I think if we start spreading the word, then we're also going to start... Um, making life easier for dyscalculics and we can have a discussion about about what it is to be dyscalculic. So let's talk about it and actually in our work we find that's that's the first step talking about it whatever the reason for lacking confidence with numbers so let's let's talk more about it let's have number natters about number confidence let's have number natters about dyscalculia. Great thanks so much Peter Jerry. You're very welcome all right thanks for having me. Thank you bye-bye. Bye-bye.